Good morning. Today we are going to work on factoring polynomials. We are going to do the difference of squares, the difference of cubes, and the sum of cubes. The TEKS is Algebra 2, 7e. So first we're going to start with the difference of squares review. This comes back from Algebra 1, but will be needed for some of our future problems. A difference of squares means you have a subtraction sign, and it means you can take the square root of each of these terms. So if you can take the square root of a squared and you can take the square root of b squared, then it factors to one sum and one difference of the square roots. So we're going to do some practice problems so you can see what we're talking about. So we look here, we have to check, is it a subtraction sign? Yes. Can I take the square root of both of them? The answer is yes. So the square root of the first term would give us our a value. So the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of x squared is x. If I take the square root of the second term, that gives us our b value. So our b value would be the square root of 36, which would be 6. So we know our a value, we know our b value, so now we're going to put that together to say that it factors to 5x plus 6, which is the sum, and it factors to 5x minus 6, which is your difference. Okay? So we're going to try that again on the second one. We have to check first. Is there a subtraction sign? And can I take the square root of both of these? The answer is yes. So if I can do that, then I factor it to the sum and the difference. So we take the square root of 100x squared, which would end up being 10x, and we take the square root of 64, the square root of 64 being 8. So there's your a and b value. So you're going to substitute those into a sum and a difference. 10x plus 8, 10x minus 8. And you could always distribute those or FOIL those, and if you did, you would actually come back to this term. Now the last one, my last difference of squares example. First you check for a subtraction sign. Oh, this is a plus sign. And I look at these, and yes, I can take the square root of both of them, but it's not a difference. So this is fully factored, and I can't go any further. Okay. So now I want you to go ahead and pause this video here and try practice number one, two, and three on your own. Okay, check how you did. So this first one, we took the square root, took the square root, and it factors to a sum and a difference. And this one was our tricky one. Um, just like this one, how this wasn't factorable. The problem is, is it was factorable with GCF, which we haven't discussed in this video, but we have discussed before, to always take out the greatest common factor first. So what goes into 4 and 16? I had to factor out of 4. Now, when I was left here, I didn't have a minus sign, so this is not a difference of squares. So this is as far as I could go. Take the square root of both of them, one sum, one difference. Okay, so this is just a review of the difference of squares. Now we're going to look at the difference of cubes. These are going to be more towards the Algebra 2 level of can I take the cube root and is there a subtraction sign, which means the difference. Now, if you can take the cube root and there's a subtraction sign, this is what it factors to. Now, pay attention to the sign. Whatever the sign is, that's the first one. Okay? So, again, whatever the first sign is here, that goes in here. And this will be the opposite of each other, and then this will always be plus. So, we're going to look at these, and we'll do a couple examples together. Can I take the cubed root of both of them? Can I take the cubed root of x cubed? I can and my a value is just an x. Can I take the cube root of 216? Cube root of six, 216 is a 6. So there are my a and b values. So I'm going to go and I'm going to plug them into this um, equation here. I have a minus b, which is x minus 6. And then I have a squared. Now, if it has a number, I'm going to highly suggest putting the parentheses. You need to put the parentheses around it. But because it's just x, this is going to be x squared plus, and now I have a times b, 
so x times 6. And at the end, I have b squared, so 6 squared. So right here, sometimes you have a number there, so those parentheses are important. So notice what I have here. Now my goal on the second step is to be get rid of all the parentheses. So I have x minus 6. And then I have x squared plus 6 times x plus 6 squared is 36. And that is my answer. Okay. We'll try it one more time on this one back here. Can I take the cube root of both of them? So can I take the cube root of 64x cubed? And actually, first I look for GCF, and I don't see a number that goes into both of these. So I'm going to continue with my difference of cubes. My A value is the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 27 is going to be 3. Be very careful with your parentheses here. Okay, so we are going to go and plug this into this equation. We have a minus b, so 4x minus 3. And then right here is where you got to do your double parentheses. It's going to be a squared, so parentheses 4x squared. Okay, because that 4 has to be squared also. Plus a times b plus b squared. And the last line is let's get rid of all these double parentheses, okay? We have 4x minus 3. Now 4x squared becomes 16x squared. Multiply your two middle terms. Square your last one. And that's your final answer, okay? Go ahead and pause this video here and try practice number 1 and 2 on your own. Okay, check your work on practice one. How did you do? The cube root of 249 is 7, and the cube root of x cubed is x. Cube root of 64 is going to be 4. My apologies, all of these are cubed root. So cubed root, in your calculator, make sure you're doing cubed root. Cubed root, okay? And so... Be careful right here. This tends to be where the mistake is. All of this 7x had to be squared. So the biggest mistake is students putting a 7 here, but it's really the 7 has to be squared. Okay. Go ahead and pause it and try the last one here on your own. Okay. Go ahead and check your work there and see how that one came. Now we're going to get into the sum of cubes, which is almost exactly the same. But the difference here is you're going to have a plus sign. And this is going to be a plus and this is going to be a minus. So remember, this is always the same sign. And it always changes. And then this will always be plus, whether it's a sum or a difference. So this is going to work exactly like the last page. We're going to take the cube root of both numbers. So the cube root of x cubed is going to be x. The cube root of 27 is going to be 3. So when I plug these numbers in place of here, we are going to go ahead and put those parentheses. So we have x plus 3. Whenever I plug in a number, I'm going to put parentheses. And I know some of the parentheses we're going to drop pretty quickly. Okay, so see where all the numbers got plugged in? Now my goal is to get rid of the double parentheses. So x plus 3. Now this squared is just x squared. This is going to be 9 and this is going to turn into a negative 3x. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Can I take the cube root of both of these numbers? So check your calculator if you can take the cube root. And actually, I always look for GCF. Is there any number that goes into 64 and 249? There is not. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cube root of both of these. So my A value is going to be 4x. My B value is going to be 7. So then when I plug these in, I have 4x plus 7. And again, I'm going to do my double parentheses, 4x squared minus 4x times 7 plus 7 squared. 
and then go ahead and get rid of your double parentheses, 4x plus 7. Now, 4x squared means 4 squared would be 16. So 16x squared minus, you multiply these and get 28x, and then you square this and get 49. So go ahead and pause this video here and try doing number pra practice number one on your own. Be very careful because this one has a GCF first. I know we can take the cube root of both of these numbers, but I want you to look at these numbers first and see what number goes into 512 and what number goes into 216. Okay? The number, I'm going to tell you this right now, go ahead and factor out an 8 before you start this problem. Okay, I know this one was a little bit trickier because you had to factor out the 8 first. So what happened when you factored out the 8? Well, that 8 is part of your final answer. And when I took out the 8, this is what I was left with. And I could still take the cubed root of both of these. And I got 4x and 3. So here's where I plugged in the numbers. And here's where I squared the 4, multiplied these, and squared this. Okay, practice number 2 is a lot easier. Go ahead and try practice number 2 on your own. Okay, check your work and see how you did. I told you this would be a little bit easier. The cubed root of 64 is 4, and I plugged in these numbers, and this is what I got. So, again, there's always greatest common factor, like here. So, always check for this, and then always check if you can factor any further. Um, we're going to go ahead and end this video here, and you'll practice more in class. Thanks, and have a great day.